Hi guys. So I know I haven't been on for a while. Um, I've had a thing going on with my voice. Still kind of raspy. Um, and we've had a lot, a lot of stuff going on around here. I'm a hot mess. I apologize. Um, no makeup. <laughs> Hair is a mess. Um, but we've been doing a lot of things around here. So um, we've been, um, well, I have been making um, some more garden beds. Um, I was working today on um, my watermelon slash cabbage slash pumpkin slash whatever else patch. <laughs> um, so originally I was going to um, can some beef stew and some roast, um, but it's 9.30 at night now, so that's not gonna happen. I'll be up past midnight if I did that tonight and I'm just too tired for that. So today instead, we're gonna do a quick um, little tutorial on um, water glassing eggs. So water glassing eggs, one second. Okay, so water glassing eggs is a way to keep your eggs good for a year. So you need to start with clean, unwashed, farm fresh eggs, but they can't be more than a day old. So you need your clean farm fresh eggs, which I have from a girlfriend of mine, if you can see those. Um, you will need hydrated lime or pickling lime. Um, you can get that that way, or you can get it at Lowe's. It's called hydrated lime. Get a whole big bag. Um, and it'll be cheaper than those little bags, but I'm not going to do a thousand eggs. So I probably don't need a whole big bag. So you'll need that. You will need, um, You will need your kitchen scale. You will need some sort of measuring device. You will need cord water. And you will need some type of jar to put this up. So I have a gallon jar here. Um, That's a kid. Um, so my measuring cup um, measures 0.6 of an ounce on its own. So what you need for this is you need a ounce by weight of the pickling lime per quart of water. Room temperature, not hot, not cold, nothing like that. Room temperature is sufficient. So you're going to take your eggs <clears throat> and make sure that they're clean, which they are. And you'll have to sort a little layer down at the bottom. The ones on the bottom, you can't necessarily put, um, you can't put point down. The reason you want to put your eggs point down is because there's an air bubble in here. So you want that to fall down there. But you can't really do that um, with the bottom row. So just lay them in there. Um, making sure that they're clean. Um, if they have a little bit of dirt on them or something, just wipe it off with a dry cloth. Um, you don't want to wash them off because you don't want to wash the protective bloom off. You want that on there to help protect the egg. Look at that. Didn't different eggs. Isn't that cute? It's speckled. So you're going to put them all in there. I have two dozen eggs. So I'm going to do two quarts of water, which means I will need... Um, 
1.6 ounces, uh, my pickling line will have to measure 1.6. I think that's okay. It's just some type of imperfection. Um, as long as it's not a crack. You also want to make sure that your eggs are not cracked. You don't want cracked eggs because cracked eggs would be bad. So I think we're going to skip that one. So we've almost got our first layer in and then we can start putting our eggs in point side. Here we go. Actually, I could probably do it. No, that one won't. So, all right. So we're gonna put them in now, point down, because now it'll be a little bit easier to get them in there like that. I'm gonna make sure that your eggs are not cracked. Point down. Now, once you start putting in the water and the pickling line, they may not necessarily stay like that. They're going to move around some, and that's fine. I put that egg in my basket, and we'll clean that up when we're ready to use it, and put it in the refrigerator. Um. So this, some of the eggs are kind of hard to figure out which is your point side and which isn't. I'm going to go with that one. Um, so doing it this way will give you eggs through the winter. And the reason why that's smart to do it's because there's no guarantee that we're gonna have any eggs for the winter, folks. There's no guarantee we're gonna have any chickens. So, um, not only that, but as things progress in the direction that they've been progressing, um, people are gonna start pulling back on their eggs. Um, if you're fortunate enough to get them, like I am, from local folks that have eggs, at some point, they're going to have to start pulling back. I actually know some people that already are um, for their own families. So this is a good idea to get them when you can. Uh, farmer's markets. If you can find a farmer there, tell them what you need and why. And they will be able to possibly get you, um, you may have to pick them up, that's fine, but they may be able to give you some clean, unwashed, farm fresh eggs that you can water glass as well, so that you can have them for your house. Once you've water glassed them, you just put them in a cool, dark place and just leave them so you're ready to use them. All right, so we have 23 eggs in here. So one thing that I do need to do is I need to get another container to mix up my lime because I didn't mix it in the jar beforehand. So give me a second. <coughs> Put our first cord in, in our lime. And we're gonna mix that up. Make sure we mix it up really good.
And then we're going to pour it over the eggs. Yeah, definitely need another one. And then we're going to measure out some more of the pickling lime. Somehow I have lost. Nope, there it is. I was going to say I lost my measuring spoon. So it's measuring back, my container is measuring back 0.6 again. So we just need to get this to be 1.6. Point two, one point six, <laughs> and we're going to take our second quart of water. I'm going to dump that in here, and we're going to add our ounce of pickling lime, and we're going to mix that up again. Kind of smoky. Mix it up really good so we don't want anything left in the container. We want it all in the eggs. And then we'll pour that over the top as well. So So this is what it looks like right now. Once the lime settles, it will look like this. This is two dozen. Aren't they pretty? You can see the lime on the bottom. And these will keep for at least a year. Now there are some people that have used them at 18 months. I don't know about that. <laughs> and they say they've been perfectly fine. Um, but at least a year. Um, and obviously you want to check them periodically. Make sure that there's no smell. Make sure that you don't see anything in there that looks bad. Um, but, um, yeah. That's that. If you look, you can see the line starting to settle already. So, that is that. So, that's how you water glass eggs. Um, it's pretty cool. Amish people have been doing it for centuries. Um, so, um, that's that guys um that was just a little quick thing sorry if it kind of seemed like it was dragging out a little bit um but today has been one heck of a day <laughs> busy 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 and then i have a bag of pickling lime already open somewhere that i can't find and that's just driving me insane so hopefully i'll be able to solve the mystery of the missing the disappearing pickling lime uh soon because it's going to drive me insane now so, but what have you guys been doing? What have you been doing to prepare for what's coming? Because uh, it's coming. It's coming pretty darn fast, too. Um, and I think they're proving on a daily basis that they don't really care about what happens to us. Um, the fact that we're shipping pallets of baby formula to the border for illegals and their children 
And we have children in our country whose parents are driving four or five, six hours to try to find formula and they're coming up empty handed. I have a problem with that. I have a big problem with that. So, um, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm all for helping anybody, um, but not at the expense of our own people. Our people come first, period. Our children come first before anyone else's. And it's really sad what's happening right now. It's, it's actually, it's beyond sad. It's, it's horrific. I never, I never thought I would see anything like this. Um, the food shortages are going to continue to get worse. Um, uh, we're about to be hit with a diesel shortage on top of that. So that's going to affect just about everything. Um, diesel affects your trains that ship uh, food, produce, uh, livestock. Um, it's going to affect the truckers, their trucks. They all run on diesel. Um construction, um, <laughs> everything, everything. We need diesel for everything. Your fire trucks, a lot of your ambulances, they're all diesel fueled. What's gonna happen when you need help? So a lot of things are going to, are going to create an even bigger nightmare for us when it comes to food supply. What are you doing? Are you just sitting around thinking, well, that's not going to happen here and <clears throat> this will turn around and no, let me help you now. The produce and the, 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 the seeds and stuff that you're buying this year is from last year. They're from last year's seeds. What's going to happen next year? Farmers have had to cut back on their crops. The cost of corn, the cost of fertilizer, the cost of fuel, the cost of everything is gone up and it's affecting them. They're culling their herds because they can't afford to feed them. That's going to affect you. That's going to affect what's in the grocery store. Milk. Have you seen what's going on with that? You walk into the grocery store and the freezers, the fridge, the refrigerators are empty. I was in Adrian um, last week. There was no milk at the Walmart in Adrian. I didn't check the mire, but the Walmart was, there was no milk. Chicken, scarce. Beef, price is ridiculous. And it, the shelves are looking pretty scrawny. <laughs> Baking supplies. Have you been getting your, your flour? Have you been getting cereal and bagging it up? Hmm? Uh, let me show you what you do with cereal. Honey Nut Cheerios. This is a whole box. It's in a Mylar bag. It's got some oxygen absorbers in it. I put two in here. I'm wondering if maybe I could have got away with one. But anyway, this is how you keep cereal for years. Am I saying to hoard? No. But when you go shopping, instead of buying two of this, buy four. This is what we eat. This is what we put away. Buckets. Get food grade buckets. Get your flowers. Get your baking flour. Learn how to make bread. Learn how to make biscuits. Learn how to make homemade tortillas. Learn how to make I don't know. I don't know. Something. Learn how to feed your family by what's in your pantry. So, I don't know. Things are getting pretty scary. Um... Price of gas went up again today, I see. It's, uh, I took a picture. Gas in Adrian at the corner of Treat and 223 
was four fifty nine. Four fifty nine. <clears throat> I remember when gas. I remember when we were paying like 80 cents a gallon. Some places 76 cents. I remember when two gas stations in Pontiac were having a war with each other. Um, and gas was like 86 cents a gallon. Sometimes cheaper than that because it kept going back and forth. 4.59, never in my life. Never, I'm 54, never in my life, never. So, what are you guys doing? Because we're here. You know, the, 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 the whole title of this, this little channel is, well, we're here, so now what? So what are you doing? Are you stocking up on food? Are you buying extra, are you canning? My partial can is right there. That's what we were supposed to be doing today. But time got away from me, so we'll have to do it tomorrow. <coughs> <clears throat> so, are you planting a garden? Are you growing your own tomatoes? Cucumbers? Are you learning how to make pickles? Are you... Buying frozen vegetables, did you buy a food dehydrator? Are you dehydrating vegetables and storing them in, I don't know, food grade buckets? Like this. This is Cajun 15 bean soup. Dry beans, bagged up, <clears throat> sealed up, and when we're ready to cook them, all we do is just add some meat to them and cook them up, make some cornbread, and it's dinner. Kids go to bed with a full stomach. It may not always be what they want, but it'll be something, because at the end of the day, when it's soup, beans, and cornbread, or soup, beans, and a biscuit versus going hungry, those soup, beans, and that biscuit are gonna be pretty darn good. Are you stacking up on your toilet paper? Because you know what happened last time with toilet paper, right? I was at the corner store, a little corner market, and I just kind of looked and uh, their paper aisle was looking a little skimpy. I don't know what it was about the toilet paper, y'all. But you remember what happened. So you should probably get your toilet paper. <laughs> Other things. How long does a bottle of shampoo last in your house? A month? That means you need 12 to get through a year. How long does body wash last? I'm the only female in my house now. So a bottle of body wash will last me, you know, depending how the size, three months. <clears throat> so I need at least four of them to get through one year, right? Bars of soap, do you have backup? Toothpaste, how long does a tube of toothpaste last in your house? Things that we don't normally pay attention to, we need to start paying attention to. Do you have a food dehydrator? If you do, did you know that you can make your own onion powder, garlic powder, make your own seasonings? Are you stocking up on seasonings? What good is having meat put away if you don't have any seasoning for it, right? People say to stock up on fuel. I don't have a way to do that safely. Um, I wish I did. <laughs> because I would. And I know you can buy stabilizers and things like that for it, but we don't have any place to put that. And that's just not something that I would, my garage is attached to my house and that's not something that I would feel safe storing in my house, right? 
So, <clears throat> um, I don't know, guys. There's just been a lot of, a lot of things on my mind, and and a lot of things that and we're not supposed to be afraid because how many times does God tell us in the Bible, fear not, right? But two scriptures just keep rolling around in my head and um, you know, they were Matthew 24 and 19. Um, and it talks about how terrible it'll be in, in those days, how terrible it will be for pregnant and nursing mothers. And how awful is it right now for someone that is pregnant or has a baby and can't nurse? for whatever reason, because let's face it, there are some women that cannot nurse. It's not just because women are lazy or they just don't want to, or they've had their baby, so now they want to drink and party, and that's not always the case. There are some women that cannot. Uh, my daughter was one of them with her last son. For whatever reason, she just could not produce enough milk. Um, with her first son, she could feed six kids every hour. Um, but for some reason, with the last one, she couldn't. And um, I started ordering him organic formula. <clears throat> so, um, and he's just as healthy and smart as a whip. But um, can you imagine how awful that is to go to the store and you can't? Find your baby's formula? Couldn't imagine. I, I wouldn't. I, I'm glad there's no babies in my house right now. I'm glad none of my daughters, daughter-in-laws, none of them have little itty bitty babies right now because I just, I couldn't imagine. Um, and the other one is, is Revelation 6.6. 6. A day's wages for a measure of wheat. The price of wheat, corn, it's going through the roof. And it's getting harder to find. So you better be stocking up on it now or else you're not going to have it. And like I said, <clears throat> whatever you have for your meal, a biscuit will help stretch that. It'll help fill up your family. You have to start thinking of things that are going to stretch. Um, fillers, you know, things that things that are going to keep your babies from being hungry. And pray. <laughs> Lots of prayers because um, where we're headed, <clears throat> the trajectory that we're on, the path that those that are in power have chosen to take is going to have 
deadly consequences for some of us. It's not a joke. That's not a conspiracy theory. It's not um, <laughs> anybody that can say that that's a conspiracy theory has not been to a gas pump, has not been to a grocery store, has not seen a baby formula aisle, has not seen milk not in the, the freezers and the coolers, has not seen the meat not on the shelves, has not seen the empty spaces in the pasta and the rice and the flour. Um, anybody that can spout that, you're beyond help. Because if anybody is sitting around thinking that we're going to be okay and all of this is just because of Russia, I, 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 I don't know what to tell you. Um, there is a channel. It's called, um, I want to say it's RFD TV, I think. And it's an agriculture channel. So at 11 o'clock, um, agriculture news comes on. And I've been watching that. And the farmers on there are extremely concerned about our food supply. They are extremely concerned about um, the fertilizers. They are extremely concerned with the things that are going on. They do not see it turning around. They do not see things changing. And they are already saying that they have to cut back on what they plant this year. Um, which is gonna affect next year. It's gonna affect the fall, it's gonna affect winter. It's gonna affect the seeds that are able to be saved for next spring, which is going to further reduce the crop for next year. So, um, I don't care what <laughs> Circle Back Jen tells you. Oh, she's gone now, isn't she? That's right. She went over to MSNBC. Hmm. I don't care what her replacement tells you. I don't care what Brandon tells you. Um, I don't tell care what any of them tell you. I don't care what people that work in agriculture tell you um, that work for the government. Um, when the farmers and the ranchers are telling you, we are extremely concerned about our food supply. When they tell you that we are having to call our herds because we can't afford to feed them because of the cost. When they tell you we can't plant any corn this year or we can only plant six out of 12 of our fields or whatever, if it's coming from them, listen to them. Because I will believe them because they're the ones responsible for our food before anybody else gets their hands on it. They're the ones that grow it. They're the ones that raise it. So if they're saying there's a problem, you better believe there's a problem. Just like the truckers. If the truckers are telling you there's a problem, we can't get fuel or we can't afford to pull and ship and deliver, then you better believe there's a problem. Doesn't matter what good old Joe and I'm sorry, Brandon, and his administration is telling you there's a problem. So folks, we're not headed for a recession. We are headed for a depression. A modern day 
depression. But here's the difference between now and back then when it happened in the 30s and 40s. People back then, they had a skill set and they had knowledge that people today don't have. Having a garden was common back then. People grew their own food. People said, I don't want to do that. Very few, especially the younger generation. People don't know how to can. They don't know how to make bread. Did you know you can can milk and butter? <laughs> yeah, you can. You can can just about anything. People today don't know how to do that. Girls today don't even know how to sew a button on a shirt. So, here's my question. I was thinking about this the other day. So, when it comes to this modern day depression, when we're standing in bread lines, will it only be those people that do as they're told? Play by the left's rules. Get the Maxine that'll be allowed to be in those bread lines. Because you know, I'm starting to talk back up about that again. They got to get everybody to get the. Some very scary times that we're living in, folks. Things aren't going to get better anytime soon. You got to get moving. You got to do what you can while you can. Learn what you can while you can. Why do you still have internet access? Because I do believe at some point, real soon, there's going to be some sort of crash. I also believe that they're going to mess with our electrical grid this summer. Might even be this winter. Because they've been talking about it an awful lot. About their concerns that the electrical grid is going to crash. It's going to go down. And, and, and Brandon's administration has no plan in place for this transition to this greener energy. <clears throat> so, they're not done with us. They're not done with us. So prepare your houses physically, mentally, spiritually. And um, pray, 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 pray and prep, pray and prep and don't stop. Either one. So, until next time, may God bless each and every one of your homes. And may his hand of protection be on every single one of you. And I pray blessings and peace over all of you. Have a good night.